Hi, it's Joe. How are ya? So today I'm going to be building the DD-797 Cushing U.S. Navy Destroyer. This is a waterline series from Tamiya 1700 scale model kit. I have not built a model ship since I was a little kid, so I'm excited to try this out. I typically build airplanes, but I like the camouflage pattern and I've been wanting to try this out for a little while. So let's take a look at what's inside. Inside the box you get three different sprues along with some decals and directions. Everything seems to be finely molded despite the small scale. It looks like you have two different choices with your decals. There's going to be several shades of gray that you're going to need to paint this also. More on that later. As I look at the directions, there aren't very many steps. However, each step is pretty intensive and has a lot of different things to do. It will be important to keep track of where you're at and what you've already completed. You might even try crossing stuff out. So let's get started by cutting off the necessary pieces, cleaning them up, and starting the assembly. The two most important tools that I use during this build, I feel, are a good pair of tweezers as well as Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. There are so many small parts that it's impossible to hold with your fingers and accurately put into place. Also the Extra Thin Cement is great because you can just put the pieces down and then put the glue around the boundaries. This works very well. This kit also requires that you drill holes in certain places, so make sure you have some decent drill bits to do this with. Be on the lookout for certain parts on the kit that need to be cut off. There are a few of these, so always pay attention to the directions. They're easy enough to cut off with a hobby knife, and then I smooth them over with some extra thin cement.
some pieces like this anchor where there is no place to put it. You just have to look at the directions and put it where it belongs. So there are a few pieces that are like this you should be aware of, but as long as you're looking and taking your time, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. There's also pieces like this flagpole they want you to use stretch sprue to create. I just cut off a piece of sprue and it seemed to work fine. As for painting, I kept all of the gun turrets and lifeboats separate from the main ship. I figured it would be easier to paint these separate and then put them on later. And I gave everything a coat of primer. And then using a light pencil, I drew on the camouflage. So the trickiest part for me probably was drawing the camouflage pattern and all the different types of gray used on the model kit. The light gray primer I just left as the light gray on the ship and then I had a medium gray color that I'm applying now and then there was a dark color to use on top of the deck and I just used a medium blue color and black to create that. They called out XF50 which I did not have but I thought the medium blue was close enough. So I did attempt to mix these colors together. You could really go to town and use the exact colors if you wanted to, but I felt it was unnecessary and I was happy with the completed model. You can always lighten colors by adding white or darken colors by adding black and even apply filters if you think it's too dark or light in the end. And this is basically how I mix my colors together. So in the Tammy instructions, if something calls for two parts of one color and one part for another color, I will do one part in this pipette and I will rinse it out so I can see the next part that I put in there. And then I'll switch over to the other color and do the exact same thing. And then let's say there's three parts total in that cup. After the colors are mixed, I'll put three parts of water in there to try and get a 50-50 mix. And that's pretty much ready to paint with a brush or put into an airbrush. So that's my method to how I do this. With the ship painted, I move on to the smaller parts and paint those separately and then just start adding them onto the ship. The big turrets were quite fun to paint the different camouflage patterns, but I got through it. And these life rafts, they don't have any grooves to fit into, so you have to rely on looking at the pictures and then gluing them into place, so a little bit fiddly. And then before I put on the decals, I just make sure to put a clear coat over the model and I apply the decals after that.
And now I just put a wash over the model. This is the Tamiya Accent Panel Line Wash black color. And now I seal with a matte varnish. So that's as far as I took this model and I think it turned out pretty decent considering I don't really build ships. But I figured what would a waterline model be without some sort of scenery around it. And since this is a first for me I decided to try another first and I thought I would try and build a simple diorama out of it. So I went to the store and I bought this display case and we're going to try and do something a little bit special with it. I was perplexed here but they give you these two bumpers if you want to stand the case on its side so that's why I'm kind of like, oh cool. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this out of styrofoam or what, but I figured if I was going to use plastic here with this case, I would put a primer over it, and then I would put the base color, and I had some of this brilliant blue left over from a car model that I did a long time ago, and then I just sprayed over that with this, and that gave me a blue base which I thought matched the color of the box water. so. I was pretty satisfied with it. And then I bought this Quick Seal Ultra and make sure you buy the clear stuff. And it goes on as like a white paste and it dries clear and it's silicone. So you can use it around the house afterwards if you want. So in the beginning, for me, it's all about coverage, and I use a knife to just kind of spread it like butter on toast, and then once I'm happy with the coverage, I grab a plastic spoon, and I use this up and down motion over the top. This makes wave-like structures, and then once I have this created all over, I place the model on top of it. I do it at an angle, because I think it looks better at an angle. And then you can add more silicone if you'd like to represent the wake of the ship. I did look at a historical photograph of the Fletcher class destroyers and the type of wakes that they made so I was trying to be as accurate as possible. And using a toothpick I just kind of create the signature ripples of whatever you know waves that the ship would create. And like I said this will dry clear. If you have a lot of it concentrated in one area, it won't dry completely clear. You will get a little bit of cloudiness in those parts, but I think it works out pretty well for what I'm trying to do here. And you'll see how this turns out. And then once the silicone is dried, I take some white paint and I just dry brush over it. And this creates the, the white waters coming from the ship and for some silicone and a ten dollar display case I was pretty satisfied with what I had created here it's not as in-depth as other people that I've seen but you know I think this works out great for my collection I would like to thank you for watching my video I really appreciate it I hope you got something out of this, and I hope this inspires you to make a model of your own. And I have a great spot for this right here. So, thanks, and until next time, I'll talk to you later.